This is an audiogram. An audiogram is the information that I receive from an audiologist or the child's doctor or the hospital telling them about their hearing. Now, I know it looks like a mess, but let's just break it down into some simple parts, okay? First of all, from this side to this side on the top is the frequency of sound, and that's measured in hertz. So this is a very low frequency sound, and this is a very high frequency sound. So across the top, we have frequency. From top to bottom, we have volume. This is a very soft sound, and this is a very incredibly loud sound. These go in measures of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, as you can see. They're logarithmic though, so it's not like 20 is more than 10, is 10 more than 10. Um, there's a special formula, so it's more than that. It's, it's really complex, but for our purposes, you wanna know that this is a soft sound and this is a wicked loud sound. Okay, over here, we can see the levels of hearing loss. So anything from below zero to 20 is considered normal hearing. Anything from 20 to 40 is considered a mild hearing loss. 40 to 50 is a moderate hearing loss. 50 to 70 is a moderate severe hearing loss. 70 to 90 is severe. And from 90 on up is a profound hearing loss. Um, I have put two, result, two sets of results on this. So you're only gonna get one set. I'm gonna send you, at the same time that I'm sending you this, I'm gonna send you a copy of your student's audiogram overlaid on a visual audiogram like this. So it'll be a little easier to read than this jumbled one. But for the purposes of explaining how it works, we'll go with this. Um, some things to know about an audiogram. Where we, the frequency of sounds that are made by the letters and blends of our language is recorded on this audiogram. There is this green area here. This is often referred to as a speech banana, meaning that this is the area, frequency and volume wise, where language is captured. For frame of reference, there are some other pictures included, but I did not draw them all, so I just wrote them out. Here's a baby crying. Here's a dog barking. Here's a piano. Here's a vacuum cleaner. A telephone. Lawnmower. Chainsaw. Rifle. Airplane. Helicopter. Motorcycle. Um, here are birds chirping. And here are leaves rustling. Chances are your hearing is somewhere from minus 10 to 20. A student is considered to have an educationally relevant hearing loss if they have anything below the line of 20. That's why we offer them hearing assistive technology so that they can fall, be boosted into that normal range. The goal of that technology is to create a 15 decibel gain. Well, it's a little more complex than that, but a 15 decibel gain between, gap between the voice of instruction and the background noise that is already present in a room. Okay, normal conversation happens right around here in the middle of a speech banana. So it really happens in this mild hearing loss category. So, Think about that. Think about your student sitting in a classroom in normal range of conversation, which is what, three feet? That's where this is. If their hearing is below that, they're not hearing it. If there's background noise, they're not hearing it. 
So, um, let's talk about a couple other things. These are written generally in red and blue. Red is round and is the right ear. So I always remember red, right, round. And an X is for the left ear and that's generally blue. So when a student or anybody goes and gets their hearing tested, they're placed inside a soundproof booth. And in that booth, there is no sound at all. So it's optimal listening conditions. Then they have little inserts that they place in your ears and the audiologist will send a sound. They'll test one ear at a time and they'll tell you which sound, which ear it is. So you have no sound, you have direct audio input into your ear and you're being told which ear to listen to. Under the best of those circumstances of hearing, you really couldn't get any better. This is what is recorded. The second you take that plug out of your ear, it gets a lot harder. The second that door is opened, it gets a lot harder. The second that you're placed outside of a building or in a room with another person or any other sounds at all, it gets a lot harder. So what you see on your student's audiogram is a representation of their absolute best ideal hearing conditions, which exist nowhere else except for an audio booth with the door closed and a plug inside your ear with information telling you what's coming. So you figure by the time they're in your classroom, this is completely best case scenario, no way is it ever gonna happen in a classroom, right? Okay, so really briefly, I've put up two different students, two different kinds of hearing loss. What you wanna know is that a student hears only what is below that line or an ear hears only what is below this line. They do not hear anything above this line. So in the case of student number one, in her right ear, she has pretty normal hearing all the way up to 2000 Hertz and then slides down to a moderately severe loss by 8000. So the sounds that she does not hear are k, f, s, and th, th. So for somebody who is listening to language and learning vocabulary and learning language for the first time, they are not hearing k, f, s, and th. She's also not hearing birds chirp and she doesn't know that leaves rustle and make a sound. In the case of this student, you can see that in both ears, his hearing is below all speech sounds. So this student, under the best circumstances, hears no speech sounds at all. So if that student is learning language, is very young, is learning the English language, um, is learning new vocabulary, new concepts, or get this, maybe that student even speaks a different language at home, so they're learning their second language, you can see that it is excessively difficult, nay impossible for them to hear the sounds of language. It's really important that you wear the hearing technology that has been handed out to you for your students. And a lot of times students will say, oh sure, I hear you, but remember, they only hear what they hear. They don't hear what they don't hear. So they can't say, hmm, no, I didn't hear you. Besides, you think about a child who's developing and they say, oh yeah, I heard you. They heard a sound. Did they hear enough of that word? This student only heard half of the word. This student didn't hear any of the words. Now they do get gain from hearing aids and they do get additional gain from hearing assist assistive technology. And the goal is to get them so that they hear more. But we don't really know what that is. So, 
When you get and look at your student's audiogram, think about those kinds of things and call me if you have any questions. I'd be happy to explain it to you.